About 50 million people in the United States have an autoimmune disease. That's one in five. And there are more than 100 types, including Hashimoto's, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and Crohn's. Some of these are understood better than others. Many of them are shrouded in mystery. That's what we're talking about today. I'm Mike Tucker, and this is Lifestyle Magazine. This is Lifestyle Magazine with your hosts, Dr. Sharmini Long, Obi OBDK, Lionel LaMountain, and Mike Tucker. Autoimmune disease is something that I only heard about in recent years. So what is this? Well, the immune system is really there to protect the body from foreign things like bacteria and viruses. And what happens with autoimmune disorders is the immune system then starts attacking the body's own tissues and causing damage. Hmm. Are there and some general uh, side effects people have in common with this disease? Well, really, it depends on the organ that's being affected and, and what the autoimmune disease is. But in general, for most of them, you're going to have symptoms of fatigue and aching, uh, increased need for sleep. You might have joint pain or GI issues, depending on what the autoimmune disorder is. That's kind of tricky. I know a lot of people will have those symptoms, so I bet this is a disease that gets misdiagnosed all the time, well, is it? Especially early on, because they can be quite nonspecific. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a nutritionist, I've actually had clients that had celiac disease, and what celiac disease is, is basically the inflammation of the intestines, and that happens when these individuals are consuming gluten types of foods. Mm. So I have to create a diet program that is gluten-free to avoid that, them having that. So, so yeah. this is a life-altering issue, is it not? Yeah, I mean, really it, kind of an inflammatory life-altering yeah, yeah. issue. It changes everything. All right, we're gonna learn more about that today. It's time to go see our first guest. Right. Andrea Beeman has appeared with Barbara Walters on The View. She's been on Dr. Oz, she's written four books, and is a passionate holistic health advocate. And she suffers from an autoimmune disease, although I think I should say suffered, is that right? Well, that's it, correct. Although if stress gets high, the autoimmune disease will come up to the surface. It comes back again, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me the story. How did you figure out that you had this? Well, about uh, 22 years ago, I was diagnosed with uh, hyperthyroid and a large goiter. Oh my. Yes. And my doctor said, you need to take radioactive iodine to de destroy that goiter and mm. then be on uh, Synthroid or some other medication for the rest of your life. And I said, I don't want to be on medication for the rest of my life. At the time, I was only 28 years old. Mm. I said, I think I need to change my diet and my lifestyle. And my doctor said, your diet and your lifestyle have nothing to do with your disease. Wow. Yeah, so a lot has changed in the past two so you decades. you changed your diet and your lifestyle. Did you go back to the doctor and, well, what results yes. did you get? And did you go back and what did he say? It was, it was a she. She, okay. <laughs> All right. uh, I changed my diet, my lifestyle, and in four months I went back and my numbers were changing. Mm. In four months? In four months. Okay. And it was starting to go into a different state, out of hyper, extreme hyper, heart palpitations, and then the doctor said, okay, you now it's not normal. You still have to take this medication. I said, listen, I'm feeling really good. I'm sleeping at night. Mm -hmm. My weight's coming down. My hair stopped falling out. I said, I'm going to continue. <laughs> Those are good things. Yes, they're good. <laughs> so why did, you want you, why did she want you to keep taking the medication? Because it was still abnormal. Okay. Right? So I said, I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing and see what happens. Mm -hmm. So for the next two years, I continued eating well, taking care okay. of myself, well, reducing let's stress. Let's get specific. You said you continued doing what you're doing. What were specifically one or two things you're doing that you thought were making the biggest difference? Changed my diet. Uh, how? I got off all of the junk food and the crap food and okay. the packaged food and yeah. the chemicals right. and the stimulants, and I started eating real food. Okay. Wow. Real food. Yeah. Makes you know, a difference. We're talking raw? Are we cooked or raw or what? Raw, cooked, just as long as it was out of the earth as opposed to out of a box. So anything that had a face you didn't eat? Or, oh, no, I ate things oh, with you faces. ate things with faces, all right. So it wasn't just vegetarian. Just not humans. I right, just okay, not okay, good. Oh, well, that's a good, <laughs> a good step. Really. But, but no processed foods then, right? Yeah, no processed foods. Okay. And every six months I went back for another blood test and my thyroid went from hyper to hypo to hyper to hypo and then and Hashimoto's. Uh huh. Right, so it toggled back and forth, which indicated an autoimmune condition. Okay. And, um, and then it became normal after two years. Wow. No, goiter never came back. And if today, if I'm under a tremendous amount of stress, I feel something happening. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll feel it go out of balance. But, I, you know, I, I reduce the stress, I go back to eating well, and 
What about Maybe rest? Good. Did oh, rest, rest play a significant role? Yes, of course. No. I mean, did, you weren't getting a lot of sleep or rest before? And... Well, you know, I was living a, a traditional or a classic American lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> you know, coffee yeah, all day coffee, long, yeah. up oh, all man. night, uh -huh. you know, and, and not getting enough sleep. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's true for most people, though. Yeah. So how did you know to do these things? Hmm. I mean, really, what, that's a great what question, prompted right? you to do these things? How did you know <laughs> this? Years prior, I had watched my mom go through the treatments of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, it was in the 1980s. She had um, a, a radical mastectomy, for those of you that remember mm -hmm. back then. Yeah. They took off the whole breast, all the lymph nodes, oh. all the skin. Yeah, it was yeah. really radical. And then she did chemo and radiation, and they tested her, and for five years they said, okay, no more cancer. Mm -hmm. But 11 years later, she fainted, and uh, we couldn't stand her up. We called 911, took her to the hospital, and the breast cancer that, even though she no longer had the breast or any of the mm -hmm. lymph nodes or anything, uh, they said, okay, now she has breast cancer in her liver, in her no. lungs, in her oh bones, in her brain. Oh my oh no. So we did the same treatments mm -hmm. again, radiation and chemotherapy, and we watched her getting weaker and weaker and yeah. weaker and more frail, no hair and yeah. skin and bones. And my dad had read an article about a doctor that had healed his pancreatic cancer of mm. all things, mm -hmm. right? You get pancreatic cancer, they mm -hmm. say you have three months to live. Mm -hmm. And he healed his pancreatic cancer by changing his diet. Yeah. Yep. His diet. So my dad said, let's try it. Yeah. So we tried it on my mom, and we started giving her this weird food that didn't come out of yeah, a box. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she started to get some color back. Mm -hmm. Lips got pink again, cheeks got a little rosy, yeah. her eyes had a little twinkle. It wasn't enough to bring her back from where she was. Mm -hmm. She died about 18 months later. Mm -hmm. But that planted in me a seed mm -hmm. that if I get diagnosed with something, I'm going to try. Try this. Try first. Yeah. Before I do something dramatic. And like it's had a great effect for you. Then, so far, it? so good. That's it's 22 awesome. years later. Wow. Well, that is yeah. good. We want to hear more about your story. We have to take a break. And when we return, we'll talk with someone who suffers from another autoimmune disease, psoriatic arthritis. Please don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <music> Ryan Lee is a businessman from New York. Ryan, tell us your story of autoimmune disease. You look like a healthy guy, young, fit. I when did things start good. going it was south? It's probably about four years ago, uh, similar to Andrea, I started having these symptoms, um, and I couldn't figure out what it was. What were some of the symptoms you had? You name it. I mean, it, it was pretty much everything. It started with joint pain. I was playing yeah. a little bit of tennis, and I was having trouble gripping the racket. Huh. My feet started to hurt, so I went to a podiatrist, and then an orthopedic person, and then I started getting really tired. Um, and like napping, you know, not even, I'm not, I'm talking like two hour naps. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I'm like, something is going on. It got so bad to, I couldn't even snap my fingers, which sounds bizarre, but it, yeah. it was that, it was that painful, especially in my hands. So finally I went to a rheumatologist and immediately, um, he looked at my hands, everything was swollen, my feet, especially he said, oh, you have psoriatic arthritis. Man, wow. What? It, it's taken me about three or four years to learn how to pronounce that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I still you. can't. I think I might have messed it up. Uh, and that was it. Yeah, and, and, and like Andrea, similar story. Mm -hmm. The doctor said, okay, we're going to put you on the chemo. Chemo? Like, I'm like, chemo? He's yeah. like, just make sure you're not around a lot of people get sick. I said, doc, I have four kids. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's, there's always like a runny nose. He said, well, Everybody. you're going to have to come in every two weeks and get blood tests. I'm like, wasn't well, there something else? What about nutrition? Because I knew, I knew some stuff about that. Same story. Uh, no. That's not going to make any difference. We don't know what's going on, so let's just give you the drugs and kind of kill everything. Yeah. So you said you knew something about it because your, your training is in uh, kinesiology or... Right, exercise physiology. Yeah, so you know uh, about the body and nutrition and... Anatomy and physiology, and I took some master's level. Uh, that's what my master's is in, yeah. but it uh, didn't help. No. Uh, yeah. And, you know, just like life, when I started having the kids, you know, after one kid and two, and you start eating oh, yeah. some of the chicken yeah. fingers off yeah. the plates, and, yeah. and all of a sudden, it you changes start getting everything. Them. Everything yeah. changes. And remember, everything has it really like M&Ms, too, so that probably didn't help too much. Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> I love M&Ms. M&Ms yeah. yeah. were my, I would sit at night yeah. and a bowl yeah. of yeah. M&Ms. And, and, That's still and like my little, yeah. 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 I do like the plain M&Ms, not yeah. peanut. Okay. So, so let's you, not get crazy. Okay. Yeah. So you decided to change your diet. Yes, that was where I started. And I immediately went like pure detox. I eliminated... The big three that, that I found were causing inflammation, which was gluten, mm -hmm. dairy, and sugar. Yeah. And eliminated everything. And it, um, almost immediately, I started to feel better. Uh, but here was the challenge. It was really hard to eat <laughs> because I couldn't 
eat anything. It, there was stuff to eat, and what I found was then I started slowly introducing things back in to the point where I went overboard. Uh, I got and you. I, then I took a step back and said, okay, I need to have a system where I'm going to try to eat as, as well as possible, but still have some M&Ms once in a while. Right. Because um, right. that's what I found. It was If I go all or nothing, like if you tell me I could never have a chocolate chip cookie for the rest of my life, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> yes. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of a problem. Yeah. So it was just this kind of thing. And I came up with the system. And I, I was a child. I was born in 72 and really grew up in the 80s. Yes. And my whole thing was like, live like the 80s. 80% 80 of the time, I'm going to eat really well. Yes. And I have a good nutritional bar in the morning. I have a salad for lunch. Mm -hmm. I, a lot of times, a salad for dinner, too. And the 20%, I'll have a little bit of M&Ms or a little bit of things here and there, just yeah. a little bit. Uh, and it's, it's worked well for And that works for, me. for you, then. Yeah, for and me, it's worked. And following that diet not only helped you with, with psoriatic arthritis, but y you look like you've lost a lot of weight. I've known you for a long time. Yeah. So you went, what, which, okay, so what's your waist size? Let's tell four million people right now, what's your <laughs> waist size? You went from <laughs> so what to what? I was, so I was, um, so at the height, it was about, so I lost weight and I started to gain, I was, yeah. About a year and a half ago, I was almost 200 pounds. Yeah. And I'm only 5'8". I know yeah, I look that, like I'm 6'8". Uh, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. know I'm a huge monster. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was almost a size 36 waist. I'm down to a 32 and Man. at about 163 pounds. And that's the same that's great. weight and waist I was back in high school that's and great. college. Good job. And what Thank would you, you. Yeah. Of those you. things you did, those big three, which one do you think had the biggest effect when you eliminated it on you getting healthier? With oh, Between gluten. Gluten, sugar, sugar and, and uh, dairy, I think you said. Okay, I you will really say, you know, for me, the big thing was dairy. Dairy, yeah. And I, it's funny, if I'll have, like I can't drink a milkshake or anything yeah. like that because the next day is when I feel it. Just really? like mm. you said, you start to feel it here. Mm -hmm. I start to feel it in my joints. Yeah. Um, and, and also, I was so used to, I used to drink so much milk. I grew up eating a lot of cereal, yeah. the right. And my stomach was always bothering me, but that, that almost became normal. It became mm -hmm. like, oh, this it's is how you're supposed is, to feel. Yeah. Once I start eliminating it, I'm like, God, I'm not running to the bathroom every five right, minutes. Right, right. I know this is a family show, but <laughs> yeah. I won't get too graphic. But uh, I just feel reality, so, though, I feel this, so much this better. Disorder. Yeah, right. Um, How about other areas of your life? Did you change sleep? Did you change exercise? Sleep, so I'll still take like little naps. I know yeah. it's this little, oh, you should yeah. never take a nap. Oh, you gotta Why work not? and hustle and grind. Yeah. But I'll take 15 minute naps good. and it feels good. Uh, so sleep, I always try to get at least seven hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and then fitness, I have a really just a simple, fitness routine. I do 20 minutes every day, even this morning. Yeah. It's a combination of very low intensity on the treadmill, highest incline, walking, and I jump off every two minutes. Mm -hmm. I stop it first. Yes. Jump off <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. <laughs> I want to stop it first. Uh, and then I'll do body weight exercise. I'll do push-ups, pull-ups, and some core sure. work. That's good. And I do that for 20 minutes every single day. Okay. And that was it. And, and that's really all you've done? That was it. That I think you could do that. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm ready. I'm ready to get over here. We'll yeah. do a push-up. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> I'm a walker. I'll, I'll walk uh, five to. I, I've walked up to 14 miles in a day. I just love wow. walking, and that's how I how I keep. That's uh, a lot. I, I, if I drive 14 miles, I have to take yeah. that. <laughs> but I, no. But I was, and it's fun because in, in college I was a sprinter. I was captain yeah. of my track team. Yeah. I love sprinting, but it was really bothering my joints. So I I really like the walking at the highest incline, mm -hmm. about three to four miles an hour, and just kind of hopping off and. Right. Yeah. But making it simple. Not, and if people like yoga or whatever they like, yeah. do that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It doesn't just. How long did it take for this to really have an effect on you? When I got serious about it, I started to lose almost immediately, and within about a month, I was down probably about eight pounds, yeah. and almost all my symptoms and your were gone. Symptoms, symptoms are gone. gone. So you went for, back to your doctor for about a year and a half. What has your doctor's response been similar to her? I didn't go back to that doctor. You didn't go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I did not go back to that doctor. Yeah. You know, I when I even when I walked into that doctor's office, the people behind the, everything felt sick, and just <laughs> I didn't I didn't mm -hmm. like the feeling and the energy mm -hmm. of it. So, um, Andrea, did you go back to your doctor? I changed doctors four <laughs> times. A theme. Four, four times. times in two four years. Times. If you don't and I like got a different the diagnosis yeah. each yeah. time. If you don't and like what the doctor says, you find a new yeah. doctor. That's, that's my health plan. Yeah. <laughs> it's a new book I'm writing. Yeah, that's what you're doctors. Doctors. Yeah. But again, I, I don't ever want to trash doctors because I believe no, of course. them and I know yeah. that they, they care about people. Oh, we have that's one on the show. Do. Yeah, we have one on the show, so I don't ever trash doctors. But it's true that some doctors are better about certain areas and they understand things better than others. And so it's it's smart then to find someone who really works with you. That's really what you're saying. Yeah. And I respect that. Well, also, what they were taught initially may not be true well, today. Exactly. You know, yeah. The other thing with them, because we work with a lot of physicians, they know typically that patients might struggle with implementing what they're supposed to do to get healthier. So yeah. they're, they're really trying to help a patient be healthier, and right. sometimes a pill or a treatment will help. But you guys, we appreciate you really taking charge. It's an inspiration to our That's viewers right. of taking right. charge of their lives. We're going to have to take another break now, and we'll be right back with our entire panel right after this.
We're back with Andrea and Ryan. Andrea, I know that there are a wide variety of autoimmune diseases. Do they have anything in common? Yes. All of the autoimmune diseases, the body is finding something and attacking it, right? Mm -hmm. So they all have that in common, that there's some foreign thing inside the body that the body is recognizing and saying, this shouldn't be here. So whether it's food, whether it's a cell, whether it's a gland, whether it's an organ, but something in there is not in alignment mm. with the way that the body is naturally designed. Right. And the symptoms, uh, are those s similar from uh, auto immune disease to <laughs> autoimmune disease <laughs> or, or, or d is there a wide variety of them? Yeah, well, I'm, uh, Ryan was talking yeah. about it earlier. Even yeah. I suffered with joint pain and yeah. muscle aches. It, and I think all of them, and I'm sure the doctor can speak more about that, yeah. but all of them have very similar symptoms. Mm -hmm. yeah, Charmini, so these symptoms are so general. I think we all know people who have these. What are some common misdiagnoses when it comes to this because of these symptoms? Well, sometimes people will... Um, it, it can be difficult because sometimes it's hard to hone in on exactly what autoimmune disease you're experiencing. Joint pain can be generalized to a lot of different things um, and there are a lot of different forms of autoimmune joint disorders so really seeing a specialist that is in that area to determine mm -hmm. um, if that's what you have. You know if you have a GI autoimmune disorder there are a lot of those you can have GI symptoms along with it so it really is kind of making a list of the specific symptoms that you're experiencing and then being evaluated yeah. appropriately for it. And this is better now than it used to be years ago, I think, because I remember years ago uh, people telling me they had gone to doctor after doctor, mm -hmm. all of which told them it was in their head mm -hmm. uh, or that, you know, they were just imagining things. And I don't hear that happening as often anymore. I think doctors are, are better educated about this and are beginning to diagnose it correctly. Is, is that your experience, Ryan? Yes, and, and Shamini is correct. Like, I, I went to a few different doctors yeah. and, and went general practitioner and started kind of narrowing it down based mm -hmm. on symptoms. And that's mm -hmm. why when I went to the podiatrist, because foot pain, okay, well, that's not it. Well, let, and then finding the right doctor to make the right diagnosis right. was important because we've talked about some of the holistic stuff, but we don't want to discount, like, the doctors in the medical profession. It's, it's very important yeah. to, to get the right diagno diagnosis and not try to self diagnose on Google. You know, yeah. yeah, the Google. That's, that's not good either. You don't Google want to do that. Yeah. I like what you said there yeah, too Google because um, sometimes it's hard for people, you know, you can have just uh, degenerative arthritis and, right. and joint pain from that. So sometimes it's really hard to, d to differentiate that from an autoimmune arthritis. And if you're waking up with pain when you put your feet down on the ground in the right. morning and you're getting out of bed, oh, that is that's... that is not normal. That yeah. is much more indicative of an inflammatory um, autoimmune process. Or if you're waking up with hand pain in the morning, your your joints are swollen in your hands, and then you know an hour or so later it's much better. Mm -hmm. That's much more suggestive. I have an of, interesting question an for, an for Andrea and Ryan. Um, we all know that stress heightens these symptoms, right? right? So knowing that, do the both of you eliminate negative people that could add stress in your life? <laughs> no, 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 seriously, well, because, <laughs> no, <laughs> on, exactly. honestly, I mean, that's yeah. a, it's an interesting question. Well, um, but not only for me with, with people, but my business and everything I was doing, what I found was I was taking on too many businesses, starting too many things. Mm -hmm. So I went on a simplification diet. Like I simplified everything. Yeah. I stopped, I stopped mm -hmm. traveling for six years. I closed or sold some of my businesses. So I only focused for, for about the past three or four years. I focused on one business, one thing, and just every, I go probably to reflexology three times a week. Yeah. You, you got rid yeah. of all your yeah. books too. You're huh? down to like what, 10 <laughs> books in your library? <laughs> I got, I read a book, I make notes and then I donate it to the library. Uh, like it's just, so, I don't need a whole bookcase. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, and even social media, just if people are always negative and you know the quote unquote yeah. haters, yeah. just say goodbye. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also, yeah, for me, um, I know that there's going to be stressful people everywhere, every time around yeah. the world. So I don't change the external circumstances. I change the internal, mm -hmm. how yeah. I react That's to the people right. in my yeah. life. Okay. And uh, you know, meditation helps, prayer helps, mm -hmm. intentions. Mm -hmm. How do I want to start my day, and how do I want to be in the world? Mm -hmm. You know, in this way, in a better way, yeah. so that it's good for me and it's good for the people around me. Things so, that produce an attitude of positivity yeah. that begin to help you face the things yeah. in and your I world. I have one really good tactic on how to reduce stress is go on social media and post a political post. <laughs> Um, as polarizing as possible, as polarizing and as it just possible. reduces all the stress. Yeah, yeah. There's no friction or anything. That's my that's my secret. Well, only if you're a sadist, then yeah. you can laugh yeah. at all the yes. responses yes. as you get the hate. Don't let the comments bother you. <laughs> Were there any? I'm a little, little bit afraid to go here, Charmini. Mm -hmm. Were there any natural supplements you took that made that you feel made a biggest big impact to you? 
Uh, for me, I just changed my food initially. Just I just got off all yeah. the packaged food okay. and the chemicals and yep. all that stuff and preservatives, and I just ate naturally. Right. Um, mm. For me, the two that I found made a, a good difference was a good fish oil okay. um, mm -hmm. and turmeric, which I'd been hearing more and more about as I was researching it, and I just really found it working for me. Turmeric has been shown to have anti-inflammatory properties, so it certainly is known to uh, be something that can be helpful in autoimmune disorders. Yeah. Yeah. So I took the fish mm -hmm. and I put it into a coconut curry, which mm -hmm. had turmeric. Boom. There it goes. <laughs> there you go. And I did that too. You that Sounds too. good. <laughs> or I just popped the pill. Oh, yeah, pop, with political yeah, posts. Yeah. Political posts and the pill. And pills. Uh, the, Everything's you know, great. I can like snap my like fingers again. Now. Love it. Do you guys do more diet and exercise more now, knowing with you, knowing about your autoimmune disease that you guys are dealing with, than before? Well, I don't. I don't actually diet. Okay. I eat food and yeah. it's normal. Well, I'm saying eat healthy. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah I so eat yeah. healthy, that naturally that's raised, that's no yeah. chemicals, yeah. no pesticides. Um, and every day, like you were talking about earlier, every day I move my body. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Every day, get it go. in the flow. Movement. Yeah, break, right. mm -hmm. break a sweat every day. And break it doesn't sweat. matter what you do, just do something. But I, I find winning the morning is the most important thing for me. Gotcha. Have something good in the morning and, and carry yeah, that. You can over. build on that. Right. All right, breaking a sweat. My producer's doing that right now. <laughs> so I have to take a break. We'll be back with a final word right after this. I want to thank our guests for being with us today, both Andrea and Ryan. You can reach Andrea at andreabeeman.com and Ryan at rewindtoday.com. And of course, you can always reach us here at lifestyle.org. Thank you for being a part of this one. We look forward to seeing you again next time. But until then, you take care of yourself, all right? Bye-bye. To get a copy of today's offer, call 888-940-0062. That's 888-940-0062. Or you can write to us at Lifestyle Magazine, Box 1000, Thousand Oaks, California, 91359. And be sure to visit our website at lifestyle.org.